First, she said. I want all the men in this village who made me sad and embarrassed to feel the same way. They need to pay for all the hurt they caused me with their mean words and looks of disgust. Make them my slaves for body shaming me. Goddess Omoro stayed quiet for a while. Then she said sadly. Okay, it is done. Your wish is granted. The next morning. Hi, Pigtails here. Interesting story ahead. Watch out and take care. Once, there was a lady named Yemi. Who lived in an African village called Oro Oke. In her village, people thought a woman was pretty if her waist was thin. The thinner her waist, the more guys thought she was pretty. When Yemi was a kid, she weighed like other girls her age. But as she got older, she started eating a lot and couldn't stop. She would eat all the food on her plate, and really fast, no matter how much there was. Her mother did not help matters. Because she waited 10 years to have her one and only child and daughter as a den, she was willing to spoil Yemi and satisfy all her cravings. Soon, she became the biggest lady in the village of Owo Oke. As she got bigger, none of the men in the village liked her or asked her out anymore. Poor Yemi. They even started body shaming her, calling her all sort of names like Mountain Woman Elephant Princess Adan Great Monster of the Evil Forest Her arm alone, they say, is bigger than other women's waist. Her breast larger than an average human head. It was even rumored that she once finished a drum full of pounded yam with two big he goats in one day. This made Yemi very depressed and ashamed. One by one, all her girlfriends got married, but Yemi was still living with her father. Her father, Mr. Shola, got really concerned that she wouldn't find someone to marry her. Her sisters were all married and happy with their husbands. Yemi was the only one who had not gotten married yet. This made her father, Mr. Shola, really worried. He cared a lot about her and wanted to find a good husband for her before it was too late. One day, Mr. Shola found out that his friend's son, Teyo, who had lived in the city for a long time, was looking for a wife. Mr. Shola was really happy about this and told his friend all about his daughter, Yemi. They decided on a day for Teyo to meet Yemi, with the hope that he marries her. Hmm. I really hope Locke smiles on Yemi, but will it? When Yemi heard that a possible husband was coming to visit, she was really happy. She wondered if this was her chance to get married, just like her friends and sisters. The night before Teyo was supposed to come, Yemi was so excited. She spent hours getting dressed and looking nice to meet him. The next day, Teyo came to Yemi's family home. Yemi saw him first and couldn't help but be impressed by how handsome he is. She gasped. See fine man oh. But she quickly comported herself like the lady she is. Catching him stare at her, she assumed he was impressed and couldn't help express herself by laughing. Poor Yemi isn't used to getting attention from men. She just wasn't prepared for what would happen next. But when Teyo saw the very big Yemi, his face looked sad. He was clearly disappointed because she wasn't the pretty lady he thought she would be. I can't marry this mountain of a woman, Teyo said meanly, looking at Yemi's large body and feeling grossed out. Without saying anything else, he walked away from the house. In the twinkle of an eye, all that happiness and pride turned into sadness and feelings of humiliation. Yemi felt really heartbroken, her mother crying bitterly in the background. She went to her room, closed the door, and cried a lot for many days. I will never get married. No one will want to marry me, she kept saying while she cried. After crying alone in her room for several days, poor Yemi got tired of feeling sad. She thought there must be a way to fix her problem. She knew exactly who to ask for help. She decided to go see the great river goddess Omoros. Yemi left her house and walked to the river. She took a big breath and shouted, Great river goddess Omoros, please hear me and come here. I really need your help, she said. Suddenly, the river started bubbling and churning. Then, a super pretty lady with shiny blue skin came out of the water. It was the river goddess. What do you need, young lady, she asked. Please, make me thin and pretty like the other girls my age, Yemi pleaded. 
Yemi begged, tears filling her eyes again. No man in the village wants to be with me because I'm obese, she said sadly. All my friends are married, and I'm still alone, she said while crying. Please make me thin so I can find a husband, she begged. Goddess Omoros regarded Yemi with a look of pity and understanding. Then transforming to her unclad self, she responded. You're beautiful just as you are. You need to love yourself, even if others don't. But I will help you. Before the next market day, you will find a man who loves you and wants to marry you. This, I promise. Yemi thought about what the river goddess had promised. The idea of finding a husband made her excited, but now she wanted more because of all she had suffered over the years. Her face turned angry and full of hate. First, she said, I want all the men in this village who made me sad and embarrassed to feel the same way. They need to pay for all the hurt they caused me with their mean words and looks of disgust. Make them my slaves for body shaming me. Goddess Omaro stayed quiet for a while. Then she said sadly, Okay, it is done. Your wish is granted. The next morning, the village of Owo Oke was in a big mess. All the men woke up and realized their manhoods were gone. They had no idea why this happened. Scared, they went to see the village juju priest, who was supposed to know a lot about magic and spirits. The juju priest consulted his oracle to find the answer. He told the men that Yemi, the fat woman, took away their manhoods to get back at them for being mean to her. He said the only way to get them back was for each man to sleep with Yemi. Until then, they will stay like this, without their manhoods. A collective groan went through the crowd of men as they realized their fate. The juju priest's words were absolute. If they wanted to be made whole again, they would have to sleep with the fattest, most undesirable woman in the village. It was a devastating blow to their egos, but the men had no choice. One by one, they lined up outside Yemi's hut, waiting for their turn to sleep with the woman they had scorned and fat shamed for so long. These men obviously messed with the wrong woman. Surprisingly, despite their initial repulsion, Yemi appeared instantly attractive to the men the moment they stepped into her hut to lay with her. The men would literally spend hours upon hours copulating with Yemi. Their manhood would become energetic and insatiable when with her, yet totally inactive and limp when they tried to lay with their wives or any other woman in the village. They were powerless against the hold Yemi had over them. For Yemi, it was a total bliss and vindication. This was everything she had always dreamed about, to be desired by every man, to be seen as the most beautiful and lusted after woman in the village, instead of a fat, undesirable one. Trust me. The people you body shame are well aware of their shortcomings. You do not have to remind them. Would the wives of these men fold their hands and let Yemi keep their husbands? Would these men forever remain Yemi's slaves? Will Yemi one day get tired and want to settle down, married? These questions and more beg for answers. If you want us to continue this story, then make it go viral. How? Hit the like button. Rewatch. Share to others. Subscribe. Turn on bell notifications. And of course type, continue, on the comment section so we know we should post part 2. Bye for now.